Oh my god, I've been walking bare feet in my house. You walk bare feet in your house? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're on you. You're really living this Nigerian bush life. It's boy. not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in the coffin of my I'm house, even, though. Even my to, house is clean. Even to put my feet in the sand, I'm like <laughs> looking around. <laughs> What's good, S? What's good? How you feeling? I'm alive. You're alive, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you feel you well? Yeah, I'm Lagos trying. treating you well? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean they're not treating you well? What's going on? No, man. This place is like... Uh, do you know what I said? I said this a couple of weeks ago. I said, mm. this place is just up and down. One week, yeah, you're on cloud nine, you know, and the next week, you're just like... Who sent me? Like, who actually sent me to come? So, so let's say, let's say you're on, on the scale between one and ten. Let's say ten, yeah, is like you're having an amazing time, mm. and then one is like, who sent me to come here? Where are you? <laughs> where are you on that scale? <laughs> A solid five. You're solid five. Okay, average. Yeah. yeah, that's good. It's a good place to be, though. If, I mean, you don't want to tip below five. No, you don't want to tip below five. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to go below five, I've had man. glimpses of those recently. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you've had glimpses of those as well. I'm not talking about no. that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, don't tip below five, man. You want to stay above five. So. Here's the thing, right? I mm. still never, ever regret coming. That's the irony of the whole thing. I still okay. think it's the best decision. Yeah, yeah no, no. The, the prospect is so so great yeah. that you don't even... Even if you're tipping below five once in a while, you'd be like, you know what, let me just take some of this L. <laughs> Just swallow that air. I keep it moving. Yeah. So it's like uh, that's not the issue. The issue is just getting things done. I just don't mm. know why it's just so hard to get things done here. Yeah, that's what. Is. That's the only thing that ever makes me like frustrated. Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. Other than that, the lifestyle and is is better in Listen, some yeah. aspects. Did you go anywhere interesting? Anywhere interesting? And um, this week I was a homebody. Okay. I literally turned down like all social activities nice. uh, to be by myself. I've mm. uh, been watching a lot of YouTube videos on. Nice. Just getting the mind right because Lagos would do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Med meditation, <laughs> all that stuff. Now you need you need that to kind of stay sane. In, do you in know this what the best one I had this week? What? <laughs> Don't pray for different problems. <laughs> pray for better skill sets. To deal with well, pray for better skill sets <laughs> to deal with, to the, deal with problems. the problems. That's a good one. It's you know? a very solid because you need a good in Lagos. One. Yeah, you that's need the skill set. The yeah, best yeah. advice someone can give you for Lagos. Yeah, yeah. Try and it's, it's, you keep getting problems and you keep needing to fight to solve them instead of like you know. Oh, okay, yeah, out yeah, yeah. No, that's good, man. Yeah, so I was, I've just been watching lots of um, YouTube. Yeah, that's nice. Um, oh, there's a couple of nice places that have opened up. Um, okay. Are we allowed to kind of mention names of places? Yeah, we've been doing that. I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the library. Oh uh, yes. It's yeah, a new new place. Right. It's like yeah. a little vibe. Mm -hmm. It has an outside uh, spot yeah. that's quite nice. Yeah. There's a new place called. Uh, Arts Hotel Lagos. Yeah, we're actually going to interview the uh, general manager very soon. Yep. So, so a little bit that of a nice. sniffer there. Yeah, um, and then there's the um, Sea Lagos where we went to to kind of just have a oh, catch yes. up. Oh yes, I yeah. like that place. That's yeah. good. That was just like good. Like from do some work or you want to like it, a yeah, it definitely calm gave vibe. me yeah private members club vibes. Yeah, even though it wasn't one. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a private members club. Yeah. It's quite nice. If you want to do some work or just kind of no, it's a good vibe. Yeah, yeah, I, I visited them. In the last week or two, I spent a couple of times mm -hmm. there. Really, it's quite cool. Um, yeah. So apart from that, I mean, we're just here. We so I think there's a question in a lot of people's minds, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of like, so okay, great. Like living in Lagos is like up and down and good. But obviously, what is the health situation like? Mm. Right. Um, and I know it's something that you really <laughs> want to talk about. And I I want to have this conversation as well because I'm yeah. I'm a little bit clueless. Okay. To this side of things, okay, right? So I have a lot of questions okay, to ask. Cool. So, one of them is like, are there any good hospitals that you can say mm -hmm. that this hospital is very good in in Lagos specifically? Okay, so I'll be honest. The only hospital I've had experience at is Reddington Hospital in Victoria Island. Mm. I've been there at least three or four times. Maybe that doesn't go to the hospital, okay. but I've been there for like serious to mildly serious things, mm. and so. It was reasonable. I think. I think to sign up, 
I don't quote me, it was like 30K. Mm. And then any any time you need medication or consultation, then you pay for that. Okay. In terms of like the quality, because I find hospitals very icky. Mm. Um, it, It's not icky. It's not icky. No. So you don't feel like, oh, I don't want to be here. No. So it's, it's, it's in fact... Barnet Hospital mm. or London hospitals make me feel more ickier. Yeah. It, so uh, apart from the private ones, but even sometimes then they're a bit icky. Mm. So anyways, this one is, it's not icky. Um, the only thing I will say is I've heard stories. Again, you know, Lagos, you always hear stories. Oh, wow. So I've heard stories on like even wealthy people dying, you know, on the way to a hospital or getting to a hospital and there's no there's no ventilator or there's no things that they need or oxygen mm. or blood i have had that even in i know there's lagoon hospitals also supposed to be a very good one mm. in equity as well um but yeah health wise <sighs> i got hit boy really yeah oh wow yeah so yeah. so like i mean you don't talk about specific details but like how did you how did you go across to mm-hmm. how did you find like solving those problems like yeah so the first so the first issue I had was I, within six weeks, mm. I developed a mosquito bite allergy. Interesting. So I would get bitten by a mosquito bite mm. and it would grow to the size of that can. You see that? You see that? You see that? <laughs> 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 Wait, no, 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 no. And I would get bitten like 16 times in a day. Mm. So in the space of two days, my body was like, overtaken by these big big, big lumps yeah. from a small bite i used to have that when i first came yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but i'm one of those kind of person where like okay these things yeah it will happen to me yeah but most of the time they happen in areas where people can't see so uh, like it's like the back of my leg yeah, or okay. like my okay. thighs or something like that right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so when they happen i just get you know those like those um cream that you can rub on any the anti-inflammatory cream yeah, 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 i just kind of put that across and then sometimes it just mm-hmm. goes down mm-hmm. um but i also feel like there's a reason why that happened because not everybody that reacts that way so it could mm. be you as well right so yeah it might i just say i just said that as norm like if a mosquito bites me it gets swollen or mm-hmm. if some some insect bite me it gets swollen i just put anti-inflammatory cream but the the biggest one that really hit me was when i had malaria when I first came, I had malaria. Got malaria. Yeah, no, when I first came, I had kind of malaria in the first week. Well, I, in the first week? <laughs> <laughs> no, you've actually been through no, it, boy. It, it, I suppose we've not run back. So you, in, in the first week. In the first week. But the funniest thing here yeah, is like, malaria is serious. Like, let's be honest. Like, if you. No, let's, <laughs> Malaria is serious. Like, you know, in Nigeria, malaria is, ah, oh, you've got malaria, go and take this tablet, blah, 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 and mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. after a couple of days, it's fine, right? Mm-hmm. But if you go to a white person and say, listen, I've got malaria, they'll be like, what? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's I'm, serious. Hey, don't they isolate you? What's that thing that they, in, if you're in the, if you go to if the you're UK, in the UK, you got malaria, they will, they will isolate you. So, so, but obviously there's, there's treatments for that. So normally you're meant to take your tablets before you come to Nigeria, oh. the malaria tablets. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, we just jumped, we just jumped on the flight. <laughs> I've been coming for that in December every year. I did a tick shit. Exactly. So I just jumped on the flight. I was I'm like, I'm going to Malta yeah. or whatever. It's like, you know, yeah. just jump on the flight. There was no prep, medical prep, right? So always make sure you do your medical prep before you travel, mm. especially to an African country, because there's a couple of things that your body might react to, let's say. So, so what is the medical? Because I, I know the first time I came to Nigeria was when I was 15. Mm. And that was when I remember getting like injections for yellow mm. fever and maybe some other things. Mm. Is that stuff that we still need to keep doing? So, I, I you know what? We, we're we not the, I'm not the expert in this stuff. Let's but, check, let me check. Yeah, just check on that. But I'm not the expert in this stuff. What I know is that there's, the, the yellow fever um, stuff is definitely important. But I think you had to take that vaccination mm-hmm. and you get that yellow card or whatever it's called, right? But you take that vaccination and then you get a card that exempts you from uh, taking future vax or whatever it is. So there's a vaccine for that. Okay. Right? Uh, I don't know if there's a vaccine for malaria yet, but I know that there, there's a malaria tablet that you take, right? And then when you go to a new country, it just helps you mitigate the risk of actually getting malaria. So in what that. happened when you got malaria? Um, there's a there's a, there's the three day tablet that I normally take. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you got if I get malaria right now, which apparently I wouldn't get anymore because if you take that three day tablet, you should be fine going forward. Yeah. So there's that tablet you can take. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the name of that, but I can't remember the name. Uh, something term at the end. 
So you take that tablet and then you take one day, two day, three day, and then you should be fine, right? So it treats malaria, but also kind of gives you a bit of antibodies against... And how did you feel when you got malaria? So, you know, you just have a fever. Like you just always you have a hot. fever. Yeah, like you get hot, you have a fever. And then that was just... And then you just get a bit like tired, really. It's kind of, you feel tired. But is it... How does uh, it, on a scale of one to 10, how bad is it? Like how much, is, how much does it write you off on your day? It can write you off a whole day if you want. Like some days where you just... If you have some days, you just feel like you can't even move and do anything. You just want to be in bed. I'm and just so want to surprised. Be, I've yeah. not got malaria. I get bitten even right now. I have about six bites on me. Yeah, because it, it, so the thing is that there's two ways it happens, right? You either I've had it before, or you've done a treatment before, mm-hmm. or you know, obviously with medical stuff, there's antibodies that's created when the mosquito bites you. Mm-hmm. That body once it bites you and you have it, and then your body starts creating antibodies to fight against yeah, yeah, that yeah. Um, that disease, not disease, but whatever it's called, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then yeah, you can then um, it can then happen that you will be immune to that going forward. So some people actually kind of are immune to those kind of uh, interesting diseases. Yeah, I know blood type plays a big role because if you are uh, if you carry the sickle cell, um, I think it's when you're AS, mm. I don't think you can get malaria. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know about that. So okay. they ha- they're at risk. If they, they can't marry another AS person, they yeah. can't breed with another AS person, but they can't get malaria. Mm. Whereas if you're A and like the other blood groups, I know that you can um, catch you malaria. potentially get malaria. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the, there's obviously other things as well. I mean, mm-hmm. so um, in terms of like things that I've seen happen to other people, like, okay, they they do so. <laughs> oh man, I was driving one time, right? And then my driver said something that just made me think, "What the hell did you say?" What he, say? he said, "So basically, there's each of the car, and he says, oh, we we take it to different mechanics until one of them finds the fault." Oh so some gosh. people do that to their health. Oh my! Some people do days. that to their health. They take the they take themselves to different rest, so, hospitals, get different treatment until they get the right treatment. Honestly, and when it comes to health here, it's just better to diagnose. I know, okay, this is not good health advice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be easy, actually. <laughs> well, well, then, me, diagnose yourself. No, you to <laughs> go in there with more knowledge because don't let them take you down. I'm Before telling you, know, you go in there with more knowledge. Kind of right right now, you know Nigeria um, makes you knowledgeable in everything because you, you, like, yeah, yeah. you have oh, to. Because, you have to. You, because the person that is in front of you most of the time, if you do actually do your research, you probably would know a little bit more. Hundred percent, and they're apathetic as well because yeah. you know how how well are they being paid? You know exactly. Like so so. The, 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 there's kind of a negligence sometimes to certain things, but I think there's better places. I know there's a new um, like five star hotel um, hospital built recently, Evercare. Yeah, Evercare. Apparently. I've heard is right. yeah, so it's quite good. Lucky. Yeah. It looks nice. Um, I've never been, but I've heard good things mm-hmm. so far. So I think that's that's one that people can when I, when um, I, um, use. When I first came around that December time too, the first time I ever took myself, I took myself to the mainland. Yeah, mm. by the time I got there, I started feeling really sick, I started feeling nauseous. No way. I tried to come back home. No one would <laughs> even bring me home. Eventually, I I got back home and I couldn't breathe. Oh, I lost God. all ability to breathe. And That's scary. B- That's very scary. My chest was like I could not, literally, could not breathe that night. Yeah. Took myself to hospital the next day. It was on a not a ventilator, but on a ventilator for the whole of the next day. It wasn't like a ventilator. It's, there's another word for it. A, a bre- ne- ne- nebula. It's the it's the nose one. A nebulator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah one, nebulizer. Yeah. Nebulizer. Yeah. Nebulizer. I was on that for the whole day to help open up my lungs again. So what had happened was, and this is what I still deal still deal with now. I have serious allergies, and mm. Nigeria has inflared them. So oh, now okay. that's so why coming I keep back. getting that's why I'm getting asthma attacks, mm. eczema attacks. So like when you have allergies, you just have to make sure that you're on your supplements yeah, like, yeah, sure. consistently. Because there's so many alle- I think yeah. there's so many allergens and so many like pollutants here, your body needs to be able to to fight to, them. So that yeah. yeah. Even uh, like okay, so I think mean, skincare wise, like skin, mm-hmm. like oh, things related to skin, it's huge when you come here. Like I've oh, had the God. most skin problems I've ever had in my in life. My, preach. Since so been to Nigeria. And preach. and it could be food, it could be weather, it could be it's, environment or whatever it's it is. Weather and mosquitoes for me. Yeah. yeah. So um oh, I complained about mosquitoes on my Instagram <laughs> yesterday. I was like, why is that when I flip my room, mosquitoes are still biting me? Oh my days. <laughs> it's like they don't want to die. It's like you can't get the right you no. get the specific type of flea to get so that Mosquito don't bite you. But anyways, yeah. So I have to I had to literally um do research on kind of 
dermatology and and yeah, understand same. like yeah. uh, kind of uh, skin reactions Facts. to certain things. Facts. So what I've been doing is um, taking um, kind of skin supplements. Mm -hmm. So like there's you got the you got the biotin, you've got yeah. um, calcium, you've yeah. got uh, magnesium, all that kind of stuff, yeah, right? So yeah. you have have those vitamins there. I try as much as possible to drink clean the cleanest water as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, literally, <laughs> <Who does water? laughs> no, because you know you never tell. Even in fact, have even you get the, pure water there's the one with the zinc in it. What? Have you drinking pure water before? Pure water. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, yeah. Mm. When I was younger, yeah, I definitely have. Did they when you were younger? But do, but did people used to advise you against drinking that? No, nah, it was normal. Okay. Everybody was drinking pure water at the time. There wasn't like a kind of mass uh, bottle of water mm. at the time it wasn't like it was like ever water was it was, it was quite, it was, water. and it wasn't pure before now ever water is not in the bottle but back in the day it was like in the, in the sachets, sachet, yeah. yeah so yeah no, no i have um i mean like now i wouldn't i wouldn't think about it i wouldn't if someone give me pure water <laughs> <laughs> don't give me pure water right now to drink. Why? I will look at them sideways. <laughs> no, because because Why? obviously, like I, I mean, maybe you never know. It might be the same water, yeah. But I just feel like I also feel like germs can easily go through thing layer of plastic than a bottle of plastic. <laughs> That's what, all I think about. Yeah. So even if it's the same water, I've, by the time it has moved through all the shenanigans mm -hmm, where it needs mm -hmm. to go, I think they had more germs in there and. And it's internet that there's something called osmosis. I'm trying to get a bit more scientific, right? Yeah, it's there's something nice. called osmosis, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of where, um, when like a layer of matter in one, mm -hmm. let's say, liquid can flow Permeate. into fluid. Yeah, other, yeah. yeah. So if you're if you're having a, a container, like I would prefer the best way to drink water, I prefer glass it from a bottle. glass glass, glass bottle. bottle 100%. And glass bottle water always tastes differently to any other yeah, water, 100%, right? Yeah. So second is obviously plastic, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. obviously you've got like the water reacting with the plastic and stuff Facts, like that as well yeah. so there's still a bit of things going into the water that's not good for you but mm -hmm. at least it's better than just like thin layer plastic because mm -hmm. now you're getting things from the outside air <laughs> going into your, <laughs> into your water right? so yeah no no, no. I, I, I would rather i would rather not drink that i would rather i mean this i, I was even saying this to my friend mm -hmm. but i was like listen you don't really see a lot of people drinking glass bottle water in nigeria Glass water, like then. like no, Voss, not, like um, Pellegrino, and all this. It's, it's not common. Even as and I was thinking, we should just open a, a company and just do glass oh, yeah, water yeah, yeah, bottles yeah, yeah, inside yeah. to all these restaurants. Honestly, that's another thing I wanted to do this episode. I feel like we've got so many ideas. We won't be able to execute all of them, but we mm. should be able to share them with our with listeners. People, yeah, sure. To give because when I first came, just taking it back to mosquitoes again. Mm. I was getting bitten up and down and typical, the way our mind works, I'm like, okay, I need a solution. Mm. When you look at um, mosquito repellents, mm. they've all got carcinogens in them and no I'm not way. comfortable. I literally have an allergy. Sometimes I need to cover myself head to toe. I'm not comfortable rubbing carcinogens on, on your body. my body. And like, I haven't done that yet, but I heard people do that though. Like the mosquito, the rubs on the body. I haven't yet done it. You've not had to do no, that. Yeah, no, it. for some of us, we get, I get bitten badly. Mm. So... So then I was like, okay, cool. I'm not willing to do this. What's the solution? What are the organic or natural remedies mm. for? So for then yeah. Doganyaro, which is neem flat neem, mm. that's like one of the best ones. It has many uses. Lemongrass, lavender to some degree and some other things. So then I formulated something, mixed it with shea butter and I was mixing it, doing it. But then that's just not, when I heard about the NAFTAC thing, I was like, forget it. No, but did it work though? It works. However, you have yeah. to keep reapplying it. Oh, uh, all the time. Yeah. So there's another brand called Incognito. I bought I bought lots of bottles in London when I went in London. Okay. Um, and I used that. I used that too. They're like an officially formulated one. Mm. Um, you have to keep reapplying it. Mm. So I just think more research should be done. So if somebody is in that field, I'm not a dermatologist or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm my skills are probably limited i really think we need more research on solving that problem because mm. like you say i didn't get i have surprisingly i've not got malaria but it can protect people from malaria if they have oh, something natural to yeah. rub on them so there's a market there so this natural healthcare stuff is so interesting to me the reason why my dad actually does that right Amazing, now right? Yeah. and so he always sends me stuff mm -hmm. he creates different stuff he goes around like treating people Mm. So there's a lot of knowledge to extract from that, and if hopefully you've come to Lagos, we can inter interview yeah, him. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, there's a lot of knowledge to extract from that mm -hmm. because I feel like there's a lot of learning from the past that we're not capturing in going into the future. Definitely. In terms of healthcare, so we're not the, we're not the first people to live on this earth. There's people that have lived this earth longer than us. Facts. And they, how did they survive? How did they get through these issues during them? Yes. 
there's probably like as age goes as we get more intertwined and mixed there's different diseases mm-hmm, created mm-hmm. and stuff that grows now mm-hmm. but they used to kind of treat themselves back in the day so yeah. so what do they use what well i know that there's research that's gone into certain things yeah. but i know that there are certain things that hasn't been discovered yet yeah 100 percent. so how do we kind of nurture that um that type of knowledge yeah. to in Africa because it's important. Uh, so my favorite book ever in life, I'm always talking about this book, is African Holistic Health by Dr. Leila Africa. Mm. I'll put a screenshot like in the video. That book is number one, okay? The book talks about health, like you say, mm. from, and, from our ancestors mm. and what we used to do. It even goes into depth, for example, like chess, checkers mm. the swing the seesaw these are all ancient divination um african divination tools mm. or healing tools for example even bowling is a is an ancient healing tool from africa bowling. but it's been turned into a game in the western world no, wait, wait. so what was bowling used to kind of so what they used to do apparently I'm, I'm summarizing it but they used to program the ball and then throw it and the way the pins fell was mm. how they would know how to treat the patient interesting yeah. same thing with the seesaw checkers chess chess was um again was like that and so many wait things. let me slow this down because you it's just said something you just, you just said something that's making my head click yeah, something yeah, yeah, else yeah. right now yeah so you know when you watch like a movie right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you get to a scene where this guy goes to let's say the babalawo the voodoo master yeah right yeah. it goes to the there and it sits down and then he then it says okay i'm facing this problem or that problem yeah and then the voodoo master puts like a palm leaf on the Voodoo floor <laughs> Oh, whatever it's called, right? <laughs> it puts like a palm leaf on the floor, right? And then it puts, oh. <laughs> and then it puts like a couple of bones standing, and mm-hmm. then he rolls the, the the ball. Yeah, that's and divination. The, is that the thing? That's no, that's divination. That's like different. I mean, it's. I mean, they're both divination. I, I wasn't there when they were practicing it back back in the day. But what you just talked is another form of divination because the way the shells fall, from my understanding, it gives them information. Mm. Yeah. So. I mean, it's it's very interesting. The book even talks about, for example, seasonings. Okay. People use seasonings right now for the taste of food. That's not how they were meant to use. Basically, human beings, the reason why we have diseases is because of improper food mixing. You're not supposed to eat, like, for example, carbs and meat together. That you is, know what? I've stopped doing that. That's why yeah. I eat carbs and vegetables now. Yeah, carbs and vegetables. If you're going to have to, you mm. eat carbs and vegetables, meat and vegetables. Sorry, so meat and vegetables. Yeah, not carbs yeah, and vegetables. Meat and vegetables. I don't eat carbs you anymore. Don't, you can eat them, but even certain vegetables are not meant to be eaten together. Certain fruits are meant to be eaten together because of how our body digests things. Mm. Anyways, uh, seasonings, which are the herbs and stuff, the reason why they were called that is because they can change the season of the food, which allows you to mix certain food together. So for example, if you did want to mix like a carb with a protein, maybe you could I don't, I'm not reading the, I'm not saying the exact thing. For example, mm. garlic was a form of being able to mix two things together and mm. things like that. That's the historical, um, that's the historical uh, part of seasoning. Oh, nice. It's just, it's, it wasn't so just now, now that people are now like taking the seasoning game to a whole new level, yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. like it's, it's gotten away from that touch of uh, the health side of things? Yeah, because I when you look at how we eat, that you, God forgive me, you can see people in poverty here that are obese. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're struggling to eat what's going on. Nah. Wait, wait, wait. So you're, the, the poor people that are obese, but they're also rich people that are obese. So where's the line? Yeah, rich people that are obese makes sense. You know, historically, the, even the bigger you were, it's mm. a sign of wealth. Glutton really is the gluttony. But when a poor person is big, that means it's nutritionally, it's, it's the food that the food, they're eating. Yeah. So when you really look at how we prepare food, we whack the palm oil, we mm. fry all the meat, you know, the rice, the thing. We don't, our diet isn't the healthiest diet that you mm. can have. So you have to find ways to make it healthy mm-hmm. or they're all just literally like mm. exercise. Like do, you, do you feel, when it comes to food, right? Do you feel like you're eating more since you've been in Nigeria? Huh? <laughs> Omar. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Throughout the whole of lockdown, yeah. I lost 15 kg. Yeah. Throughout lockdown. Came to Lagos within two months maximum i put the whole entire thing back on plus a bit extra is there still a gym in nigeria <laughs> <laughs> when she asked that question and my head just i just said nah this because before like they used to just know me as that private <laughs> proper, you know what I'm saying? and it's like she asked me is there, is there no gym in nigeria oh my day i said i said <laughs> <laughs> I feel so insulted. <laughs> so you like those African aunties don't say you, you're putting away it now. No, 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 no. I definitely because obviously we have 
London, yeah, mm. we're suffering with the food, yeah. London is one of the worst places to get food in the yeah, world. I think. It's I too regulated. Know. I think the food is too regulated. Uh, but I think also there's no culture. Most of the food is like GMO, so you're not getting the true mm. flavor of the food. Then it's now overly expensive. Like mm. Nigerian food and non Nigerian food, London is not the best city yeah. for food. Do you think the one thing I noticed very blatantly when I moved here was the prawns? Okay. And because I like prawns and and crustace crustaceans mm-hmm, like prawns, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. crabs, um, mm-hmm. crayfish, all that, all that stuff, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So I had the giant prawn, all you know, the big, big prawns, mm-hmm. right, in a restaurant recently uh, when I first came, and as soon as I bit it and I chewed it, there was just that taste uh-huh. that tasted like prawns, like proper prawns, and I just thought I've never tasted prawns like this before. What part of me sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it, but it still tasted real. So apparently, I, mm. I learned on this one this week, apparently Nigeria has the best prawns in the world. When really? I say best, I think we have the highest quality prawns. Apparently, this just came from somebody in the import-exporting space. Interesting. That was said That was said on a forum I had this week, you know. So, yeah, and the thing is, Nigeria, it's a shame because when it comes to like manufacturing and things, mm. we don't even have the highest standards. Mm. But regardless, we still have access to organic produce. Like all my food is mm. organic straight from the farm. Yeah, it's true, true, I true. literally don't even leave my house. Every week on normally Sunday, I order my stuff from the farm and get it fresh. Nice, and nice. It, it, when you get into that habit and you stop mm. getting distracted from the agusi that you can eat everywhere yeah, and all the yeah, other stuff, true. the issue with the kobe, like there's too much, there's too much good food here. And that's what makes you blow mm. up, I think. And the alcohol. Yeah, the, the alcohol as yeah. well, yeah. So, no, no, I feel like definitely the, the, the food makes you uh, blow up here. I just had, I've just had a bigger appetite here. I don't know why. Maybe because the food much, is so nice. It's too nice. There's too many options, yeah. man. So like yesterday, we had like, a, you know, like a fish. Like, you know in London, <laughs> yeah? You know in London, because I, I eat fish a you lot. You like your fish. I, I love I my fish, you know what I'm <laughs> And then you know in London, yeah, like fish is not, fish doesn't come big. Oh gosh. Fish is like little slices. Dehydrated. Like a couple of slices mm. of salmon that you get, mm-hmm. or you get a couple of slices of sea bass or, or, or one little small sea bass like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's very small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in Nigeria, the fish, yeah, it's like my arm's length. So, like, whenever they're bringing it in, it's like one big ass fish. And then, like, normally, I would just take one bite and I'm, and like, in London, you take one bite and you should be fine, right? <laughs> yeah. But I just see myself finishing the whole fish. Good. And I'm thinking, how am I finishing a whole <laughs> big fish? <laughs> <laughs> like, on one sitting, right? Yeah. So, you be, the portions, is, obviously, when you think about it, the portions of stuff is a lot. Oh, the portions and, are a lot bigger here. And then, yes. because of that reason, you get used to that level of portion. Like you start eating that level of that food all the time. That is another thing. Psychologically, you get yeah. used to bigger portions. And the food is cheaper here most of the time. Apart from, literally, the Ikoi, the VI. That's London prices. But mm. that's, like... E- equivalent to central london so it's still cheaper um but yeah you definitely get accustomed to mm. larger I've, I've had to undo that in my mind now eating like large portions of food yeah, yeah true so yeah. i just the minute i see it i know okay that's two meals well mm. that's three meals in one I'll you take cut it, it up yeah yeah, yeah that's good i mean i start doing that because obviously like i'm trying i'm on this healthy journey now Same, so yeah i'm trying to really understand like how how to kind of um watch what, what's Same. going into my body, right? Same. That's kind of important. Just watch everything that's going into your body. Yeah. So even if it's, even if you're taking things like that's good for you, mm-hmm. still taking doses, don't mm-hmm. because it's good for you, mm-hmm. that you just go overboard with it. You know what I'm no, saying? No, that's another thing I've been really learning a lot this week. So for example, food, each food has mm. different nutrients, right? Okay. It has this like, you know, the macros, like the proteins mm. versus the carbs, but then it also has certain vitamins and minerals. Mm. So what each person needs to do is like assess their diet, see what they're getting mm. and then supplement what they're not getting. But as human oh, beings, what yeah, we tend yeah. to do is, okay, let me just get this vitamin D, let me get this Yeah, vitamin I, just, C. I just vitamin up, we kind of, Yeah, we, just, we literally <laughs> go, especially, I, I like love supplement shopping, but that's actually the wrong approach. So mm. what I did now, I've been looking for apps. I just downloaded this app called Chronometer. Mm. The interface is ugly as hell. I'm not going to lie, guys. Really? You can improve in that area. Yeah. But I've just been using it now to actually not just look at the macros, look at, okay, I eat a lot of kale now straight mm. from the farm. Kale smashes my vitamin C out the water really and so i still kind of supplement a little bit mm. but then it also doesn't have some other things so then now i know okay cool i need to like supplement on like vitamin d or vitamin something else yeah. so i think people should try and adopt that approach to their health as yeah, well yeah i think i'm gonna do that because i just i just picked a couple of important um vitamins for men yeah. like magnesium yeah. calcium yeah. um and then there's one more as well that's very good mm-hmm. um and then i've got the multivite multivitamins yeah, right yeah so I just been balancing between my multivitamins and a that's couple a, of those key ones. That's a good approach ones. as well. Yeah. I just use that, but then again, I know that the food in Nigeria has a lot more better vitamins because yeah. I felt 
more agile and better like condition facts just from eating when you eat the right food here definitely yeah but then again that that means that okay i might be getting some because you know you know okay you know like in london right you need a lot of vitamins because food is not not getting any nutrients the nutrients are not good for you the food the weather is not uh, designed for you because you're not yeah no enough vitamin d and all those kind of stuff so you need a lot of nutrients in london uh, Mm -hmm. vitamins in london right so I was just taking a similar approach to Nigeria, but obviously now <laughs> I'm I'm changing it around because Same, obviously yeah. because I'm not eating a lot of carbs and other stuff. I've so okay, there's some good vitamins there. Let's just su- supplement that off yeah. with the yeah. kind of um, calcium and magnesium, all the other stuff that would be in those things as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So um, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's, you have to balance it out. You go balance it out. Do you do you kind of see? Do you have any uh, let's say like virtual? Uh, doctor or nurse in Nigeria or like um, a GP that's a good that question to. I've always just kind of been a lone soldier with health and it's only when I'm literally like on death's door that mm. I'll like run to the doctor and be like look you know like even with me I had a recently had like a really serious like, eczema attack mm. and that's what um, my whole arm literally erupted in eczema mm. that's when I had to like stop eating for a few days take a step back to see okay is the is it the food is the mm. food inflammatory is it an allergen Maybe, I think it was a wool blanket that caused it so I don't know so I just kind of like I say, diagnose myself. Oh, no, Not yeah. the best approach. I just throw myself into studying mm. more and then test things out. Because those doctors, you know, I'm very big on like holistic health. So mm. when you go to these Western doctors, they're going to mm. prescribe something that is That's covering up the yeah. problem and even creating a new one. So so this, will, this actually comes to another good idea that we can actually give people. Yeah. It's like health is big. It's a big industry, right? 100%. Let's be honest. Very huge industry. Um, and... I see a lot of uh, tech products now on tech solutions yeah. to kind of address those health seen, issues. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, there's people who kind of do emergency response services. Yeah, I've met there's people that. who yeah. do um, kind of uh, virtual, I know there's docs. virtual doctors. I've seen doing that as right? Well, there's yeah. people who yeah. do medications and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen anything directly on holistic health. Oh, so excellent! That, point. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that, that I mean, so for some people, I would love. I would. I would, oh, I would prefer to, if I'll, I had the holistic I'll health. I'll buy the prescription. Service, app, 100%. App or service, X or Z. Mm-hmm. Um, someone else had a very good idea. That I'm not going to say who, but she actually been on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. But there's a couple of things that mm-hmm. things that you can actually do um, in the health sector to imp- improve the health sector in Nigeria. Hundred percent. So I mean, we would, we would love to see a lot more innovation in that area because I feel like that'd be fantastic. It's, uh, because it's we important. have access to the herbs. Mm. I literally have herbs for sleep. I had insomnia one time. I bought all the herbs, like mm. the the actual leaves for. Um, uh, chamomile, um, valerian, mm. all these kind of hops. I, I was able to get you anything you want, mm. herb wise. Some imported, some not. You can get it here, and it could just be tea. It could just be in a tea oh, base. Oh, tea, like organic you, teas. Yeah. yeah. But oh, tell the tell the light. I've seen a lot more organic tea here than anywhere else yeah. in the world. Check out Frisca Tea, guys. My friend, um, she she owns that brand. They have okay. like a hibiscus tea, weight loss tea. Um, I think they have a tea for hypertension. Mm. Check them out. But yeah, the tea market, you, there's so much you can do in that space. Mm. Yeah. I was scrolling for Instagram uh, yesterday or two days ago, and I saw this patch that you can put underneath your feet. And yeah, apparently all the toxins come out. Toxins, yeah. Is that, does that really work? So I've not researched the science behind that. I've been seeing, I know it came, I think it came from Asia because I saw them, mm. with them that were doing it a few years ago. Mm. I mean, again, I think it comes from Asian um, holistic medicine. I can't talk on what I don't know. Yeah, yeah sure. So I, I won't be able to add more insight on that. Mm. Um, I do know that when you have insomnia though, if you rub like essential oils into your feet, your feet can absorb things quite well. Okay. So I do know that helps rubbing like an essential oil essential blend with like lavender maybe mm. shea butter that can help you fall asleep wait you say your feet can absorb things a lot yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god i've been walking bare feet in my house you walk bare feet in your house yeah yeah, yeah you're on you you're really living this nigerian bush life it's not <laughs> <laughs> but that's in the comfort of my I house even, though even my to, house is clean even to put my feet in the sand i'm like <laughs> looking around <laughs> no not in the sand obviously the sand no, is different but in yeah. your house like no 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 I'm just saying no no as in nah. I'm, I'm you wear flip flops in your house 100% then. I've got Everywhere. my fluffy slippers yeah or something I'm not yeah yeah I think I'm gonna start doing that that's a good point yeah 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 because yeah, yeah, when you just said this I just realised that yeah ah. yeah that's a, that's a good point. Because they're pores, right? So even yeah. for that for that thing to be able to extract toxins, again, that means that through those pores, it's extracting. It's extracting. Yeah. It's extracting um, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can go back backwards as well. Interesting. So, I mean, so in terms of... Okay, now I want to talk about this, the health issue relating mm-hmm. to kind of cosmetic surgery. Mm, okay. Right? Now, I've been seeing a lot of crazy ass cosmetic and surgery. Bodies. Right? And, and bodies, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, okay, like, 
that trend, that whole trend, because I'm I, I like me, no matter how nice I want to look, yeah, if something's gonna make me not unhealthy afterwards, I my I will program out of it. Like my mind thinking same with me. But I don't, I don't think they think that far. You, really, that, you don't think that far? I don't think I think I don't think I I, I this is a random statistic. I think ninety percent of the people that go for those kind of elective elective surgeries in mm. the sense of BBL essentially, they don't think that far. In fact, what draws you to the surgery is being prone to want to take that shortcut. Mm. That's why you see very few of them go to the gym after to maintain the body. Mm. So I don't think they I don't think they um they think that it's far. It's so scary to me, like thinking yeah. about it for them, it's so scary because I'm thinking so you do all of this stuff and then you, your life will just be, yes. it'll be leaking and then... Oh. Yeah, they're leaking. What worries me for them... Oh, just what, thinking about it, it just like irritates no, me. No, I. what worries me for them is number one, I don't think a lot of them have the money for maintenance. I mm. think you're supposed to maintain it every 10 years. Okay. Two, we're the first generation to do it. So by the time you're 60, 70, you're not really going to know the true effects of what, of what BBL. You're yeah, the yeah. guinea pigs of the generation. Because I, I remember when all these um, Oyen Bob women were doing their breast putting silicone in their breasts. Mm. It was only, it was like literally about seven years ago, there was a big scandal. All of them were getting cancer <laughs> up and down because you're putting a foreign body mm, into, into your, your into your, body, yeah. and naturally your body's programmed to reject it. So even when you inject fat in there, sometimes your body can try to reject it. Oh, wow. Which is why some of them have issues with the BBL. I mean, it's you men, man. It's you. Nah, you know, we didn't ask nobody for nothing. <laughs> It's the media. It's the media. No, it's the media though. We just said we wanted African girls and then the white people went so to go and try and create fake African big girls. Back, you think it's not the girls in the white <laughs> No, but like our, our girls in Africa have that. No, 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 like, natural it's, it's our natural body is beautiful. It's our natural body. So it's like Man. they realised that that's what they wanted to uh, incorporate. So they've created this whole media run mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they've created revenue for these uh, their doctors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to replicate the bodies of the beautiful African queens facts, facts. and they now brainwashed us now to see that we should even want it to be bigger yeah 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 facts yeah so literally at the end of the day right like African women have a natu natural body that's very oh, nice so Ghanaian like Ghanaian women Ghanaian women I think their, their bodies are like well endowed have you seen South African people I've never, no, South Africans never said that to me, but I've never seen a Ghanaian girl that yeah. did not have, was, she wasn't uh, yeah. endowed front and back. Like she did, she, they always look small waist. They always mm. look naturally BBL-y. Yeah. Shout out to Ghanaian girls. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to Ghanaian, Ghanaian girls. girls yeah. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you, man. There's definitely, um, there's definitely kind of, there's definitely scope, right, for people to improve themselves. There's, yeah. there's no issue with that. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with that. It's just the health side of things. You have to know what you're doing. Do a bit more research. Go to the right places. Yeah, and another thing, and have money to maintain it. Another thing like that we've not highlighted, and I just want to make it obvious. Honestly, guys, it's not by it's not it's not like a rumor or anything. Like, God forbid you get into an accident here, that, that you're on your own. Really? Because at the end of the day, right? If you, there's no ambulance here, mm. there's not really any. And I've been speeding like a madman. There's no nine one one service. <laughs> so making sure that your health is on point is very important because you need to shield yourself from many of these kind of issues. God mm. forbid you're maybe in labour and there's traffic. You can't. Are you going to go on a car to get to the hospital? This is why I don't go on cross country journeys. You know. Imagine going on cross country and your driver is speeding like a madman and you're just in convoy. <laughs> literally, literally, I have heard, I've, literally, I've heard stories. I've heard yeah, stories. Yeah. So I am not doing all of that stuff. Like if you go, go somewhere, take a quick flight. Mm -hmm. When you get there, take a safe Uber or take a safe travel. Someone will come and pick you up and mm -hmm. then you go and you get to your destination. Yeah. This whole rooming through interstate with, with, with uh, uh, tons of cars driving fast. People are going off the rails on that. Yeah. And I've seen that a lot of times. So yeah. you have to just... The, the whole driving stuff as well, like... So I've always thought about it. I was thinking, okay. So what I see happens when someone has an accident, people come over. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And then everyone's trying to figure it out. Like, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Do we take this person? Yeah, press chest, press chest. Um, um, give him water, give him water. Calm him down. And then they just stay there and look at each other for like good hour before somebody realizes that, okay... We need to go and call a doctor or call it uh, emergency services. Mm -hmm. what I said it. There's a there's a there's a solution that one of my friends actually built, which is obviously mm -hmm. uh, a kind of a emergency response solution. Yeah, uh, an ambulance come and get to you in a period of time. That or that. So it is out there, but it's not as big as 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 it's not everywhere, right? So it's not no. obviously it's a growing business. It's not everywhere, but yeah. so you, there's private ambulances I'm seeing, but yeah, I haven't seen slowly. any. Like national ambulance, where it's like government-led 
The first time I saw an ambulance in Nigeria was last week. In fact, really? I even screamed, I was like, oh my gosh, guys, I'm seeing an ambulance for the first time. And I also have a friend, also the same, that's building an emergency response platform. But mm. before it takes them to penetrate any area, mm. it's going to take a while. So, so I mean, right now, if something happens to you, right as we're here right now yeah. in this place, God forbid, right? Touch with. What were you going to do? The only, the, only, the only thing that can happen is literally you have to rush to the, to the hospital. Yourself? Yeah, that's what that's just that's it. What if you have a health attack? But that that's that's why people pass. That's the that's the one thing I will just say and be honest about Lagos. You know, we say the good and stuff, and let's say mm. the bad about Nigeria. That's why I say you are on your own with health, so it's in your best interest to not get carried away and to shield yourself from these things. Because I've heard stories of I know someone. Um, he said that his his friend had a heart attack on Borderland Road and they just passed away. He crashed the car, crashed the car, and passed away. Now. <laughs> I, had to just, I, had to just, I had to give you a moment of silence because he needed that that is wild now let's just say that it was in the case with somebody maybe it was a stroke let's just say it was something like that and someone could have come quickly called an ambulance do you know what I mean yeah. like, I've had a car accident before the minute the, before I'd even got out of the, I was in a car accident the car flipped over four times before I'd even broken out of the vehicle a woman had stopped over I'd just climbed out of the thing she made me sit in her car and she called an ambulance you know, that's not happening here. So you have to make sure, you have to even try and prevent any kind of um, serious health issue. Yeah, serious health and the issue. best way to do that is to have an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle. Mm. Inf- inflammation, and or le- inflammation is one issue that can cause it, or or gut, leaky gut. I think these, these are some things that happen to people that can cause many diseases mm. from like diabetes to like to allergy stuff, yeah. anything yeah. so you have to just really try and avoid inflammation in your so, lifestyle so so i mean another thing is i'll say like have a doctor you should yeah a doctor like you kind of register with a hand to have or a relationship have a list, with him yeah uh, make sure that everybody knows or a couple of people that are close to you know mm. your doctor so in case any situation they can call your doctor very true because obviously he would have your history of of a record no, like you said there's no actually record of his of uh, no, nothing of things it's not like centralized so no. if you go to an, if you if you have an issue you go to a doctor they haven't got a database that can they can go on and check nothing. the history of your of your health records to know what's what might be wrong with you yeah you just have to go there and tell them your history mm-hmm. of your health so you have to be responsible for keeping your health records yeah tell them your history if you don't have it then they'll be doing a diagnosis as a service sorry sorry <laughs> 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 they'll be like okay let's try this let's try that they'll do yeah, I did, test I, and try well, to me, I, told them, I told them that's not it like when someone tried to diagnose with something I was like it's not that mm. so either you check it again or you bring someone else yeah yeah sure sure, yeah, sure. I, so, I said that to someone before. so I mean and, and that's this, there's so much innovation that can happen in this space right now there's a couple of things that we just talked I like, about I think, I, think, I think the most important thing to highlight is what you said I would love to see mm. I would even work with somebody try mm. and find a solution for like a holistic health application yeah. in Nigeria it's a game changer. Yeah, it's and, and think about how you can use the natural things that the earth has. Because here. you know, Nigeria, there's there already there's already a um. This is so interesting. There's already a market for that. Yeah. And let me tell you how I knew this, right? Mm. So I was I went to a beach one day, quite a quite a far away beach, mm-hmm. and then I was seeing these guys walking around selling this natural health products. So they they were having the and the little um like bucket in the head they'll put a couple of bottles that they put different type of mixtures yeah who knows what is in this stuff right yeah. but people some people vouch by those things yeah and they want to take those things and xyz right yeah so there's people already like doing it yeah. and there's people that do stuff like agbo there's something called agbo actually right? i used to drink that when i was younger for my ex but yeah. there's so there's so many things like, and so even many literally things. like I'll, I'll that agbo so i don't know it, every it's funny thing that agbo yeah, is like there's, there's no that's sorry so from what I know about Agbo, I only learned about it when I moved to Nigeria. I never mm-hmm. knew anything about Agbo before. Yeah. From what I knew about Agbo is like, there's different type of Agbo mm-hmm. and there's different mixtures and there's different things. So like, mm-hmm. not every Agbo is the same, but the one that I took one time, <laughs> I've got to say this story. Uh, this st- thing was bitter. No, it's bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, it yeah. was so bitter you know to the point that yeah. I can't even let it touch my tongue. I have to like, <laughs> <laughs> when I drink it, yeah, I have to let it go past my tongue. <laughs> Because if I taste that thing, yeah, I am not eating for that day, boy. <laughs> they literally gave it to me. What? No, I was feeling so sick. It, yeah, it's not I was feeling so sick. Yeah, they gave it to the me. They, I had like, 
headache, cold, fever. Just like, I was just feeling down. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where it was. And then I went to um, one of my family homes mm-hmm. and the cook at the time, they normally have agua in the fridge, mm-hmm. not in the cupboards for just like any situation like that. So I went there and then he, he just put it into a, a shot glass and he said, and they were laughing at me before they drank it. I was like, you know, someone's laughing at you before he gives it. I was like, what are you trying to give me? I was just thinking, nah, I'm not trying to take, I was in my head, I was thinking, Patrick, don't take this. This, is, <laughs> this could be the death of you. <laughs> like, this could be the end. You might as well just go and take a quick a little, <laughs> little uh, process tomorrow and go to bed, fam. <laughs> but I, I, he, I, I said, I, I want, because I, I want to try this. I want to just see. I was just curious. Anyways. Curious to kill the cat, by the way, but I I, t- <laughs> I took the shot of this uh, thing, yeah, yeah, and then I t- I'm not gonna lie to you. Eight hours later, I was fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally was fine. Like I didn't, f- I was not cold anymore. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the cold anymore. I didn't have headache. Mm-hmm. And everything was just gone. I just felt like a new person. And I've never in my whole life mm-hmm. taken any drug that made me feel better so quickly. Yeah, honestly. The more I learn about nutrition and like holistic health, the more I understand the body. Mm. And that book also is just so great. It even tells you, even when you knock your arm, Mm. that's not a mistake. It's your body telling you that something is out of balance Mm. in itself. Like it it really goes that deep. So you're right. We, the way Africans treated health before was to Mm. hit the root, to cure the actual problem. Mm. Okay, this is happening to you. So this means this. So we need to do this. Yeah. But Western medicine is not about that. It's about, you know, maintaining the mm. disease rather than curing it. Another thing I want to say is that I've noticed this in, in the Western cultures well, being, being in UK and other places that, mm. okay, first of all, Americans take more drugs than UK people. Yeah. Because right? I've met a couple of Americans and, and they, have they just have- They have drug adverts. Have you been to- yeah. When you're in America and you're watching TV, in between sports, they have adverts for medication. You know why? Because they give them so much shit to eat, yeah? <laughs> that they have to give them drugs to balance that shit. Oh, no, I'm being serious. Facts. They eat so much trash no, no, there no, no, it's, it's that terrible. they actually have to pump them with drugs to be normal. Facts, facts, facts. I know, I, there's no American that I don't know that don't have like four or five drugs with them moving around like- <laughs> They were just they have those yellow, you know those those yellow things with the red, the white cap. They'll be drinking drugs up and down every day. I'm like, what is wrong with these people? Like, no, seriously though, they just have. No, I'm laughing they, because it's so true. It's so true, but no. I've never seen someone. I mean, unless there's a couple of people do have, but like, it's not very normal to see just an average person in the UK with just taking our plenty age, of drugs. Our age group, but I think their parents' age, the parents' yeah, yeah, age sure. group, but them man are dealing with blood pressure, yeah, strokes, a lot of, yeah, these yeah, ones, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, I, I was gonna get to uh, my point on this. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I feel like yeah, the the food, mm-hmm. right? The food is important to what you eat because like, facts. Okay, so one thing with me as well is like. I had a conversation with my friend about this. I was like, listen, your body is also natural healings. Yeah, facts, right? yeah. So your body is designed, it's, it's, it's like the human body is a marvel of science, oh, literally, like honestly, a marvel of science. Honestly. So it it kind of knows when certain things are wrong. 100%. Yeah. And then it's, if you let it do this work, it disposes certain antigens or, or, or treatments to your yeah. body to certain areas mm-hmm. so that you can feel better later on, yeah. right? Now, not every, not, that's not the case. Some cases you have diseases that go in that the body is not ready for or can't, can't treat or take care of that you need an influence of other uh, uh, um, drugs or, mm-hmm. or medicine, right? So in the UK, and this is other places where it's like, they're so quick to prescribe trash. Oh, fuck, oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, because there's a whole economy around that, yeah, right? I so there's understand. people buying drugs, there's making money and da, 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 yeah. right? So it's like, why are you so quick to prescribe stuff that's not good for this person or might help, but without letting the person suck in, well, let's wait a couple of days, let your body do this and that, and then we'll come back and we'll treat this and that, right? Or assessing the root of the Yeah, issue. or assessing the root of the issue. Or get into the, okay, okay, no, this is happening because of this, not because exactly. take this drug, is that, oh, because... Okay, let's look at your your habits. Okay, that's fine. What do you eat every day? That's I fine. I was born with eczema. Mm. Yeah, so I was something that I was always I always had to deal with as a child. So that mm. was what was always bringing me to the doctor. Not once in my twenty six years was a, did the doctor try to even explain to me what it could be, mm. what could be triggering it, what could be causing. I never ever had that discussion. Whereas really, it took me to have to go on the internet to understand. Oh, eczema is linked to allergies. Mm. Eczema can be triggered by internal it can be triggered by allergens like other things mm. it can be triggered by certain foods so it's like 
they don't even try to have that conversation with, with you. you. Yeah, yeah. To say, okay, look, this is, could be what's causing it. They just tell you, okay, take this story, mm. steroid, and then just go and rub it on yourself, and and good luck to you. Meanwhile, that's why it keeps coming back, mm. you know, all the time because you're not dealing with the root issue. The root issue. So no, yeah, you're spot on. You're definitely like um, spot on on that, mm. but. Yeah, man, we're still alive for now. <laughs> thank you, thank God, man. Every day in Nigeria, yeah, you always think that, oh, please let it not be today because, like, I'm already here. <laughs> I'm not already here, you know what I'm saying? So you go off, always just thank God at the end of the day with most of these things that happen because, like, you never really know, you know what I'm saying, what's gonna, what's next. And health stuff yeah. is like, once it comes and if you haven't prepped oh, for it, it, trust just, me. it can kick you off your feet, you know what 100%. I'm saying? So you got to always take care, of, take care of yourself and, and watch what you eat. 100%. Um, me, I've, you know, obviously the whole hype of Nigeria, like the whole like bottles in the club and like eating everywhere. And I've, going lost to, I've lost it. I've, I've lost I'm it. I'm just kind of, okay, I'm not picking now. Like, okay, I want to eat this, this, that. Yeah. I want to go to this, 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 that. I want to see this kind of people. Yeah, facts. I want to do, just picking your stuff and 100% going forward. because yeah, yeah. you put too much faith in the restaurants. Yeah. And that, I, 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 had, I had faith. Then. I see them guys. I didn't eat fish. But for you, man, that eat fish, I'm always praying for you because <laughs> I see them look at the lagoon. <laughs> and I know you that, that, that I've been watching them from the window Duh. and I see them fishing. And that fish is going straight to the market. And the market is where all these restaurants buy their things from. And sometimes, one, I think my, <gasps> Sorry, my that's cousin... Sorry, shiver. One, um, no, it's, it's really about one time my cousin, she got a chef for us. Mm. Do you know what this man was making for the starter? He was making like, I think it was like fish, like fried in cornflakes. I that. <laughs> you want me to eat that? I think I won't have extra. Wait, 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 wait. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish it was, in conflict. I, I'm like, but the thing is, they were served at a restaurant, but they wouldn't tell you what's conflict. Like my, my point is, so many ingredients go into food that we don't, don't see. Know. Oh, a lot okay. of restaurants put sugar in things that we, at, when we cook at home, wouldn't even yeah. add sugar to it. So when you eat out every day or regularly, I'm telling you, you're gonna blow up because you're hidden ingredients. You think no, you're, you're eating, right? Yeah, you're right. I think ever since I've been eating out, that's when that's when the whole thing, the yeah. weight stuff, was coming in. I was just getting putting on weight that I shouldn't be putting on. Honestly. So yeah, and I. I, I I've just cut that down, man. I even I even gave my cook a recipe. I said, listen. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Stay within these parameters. Stay <laughs> within these parameters. Or I'll cut your head off, you know. Don't be adding too much oil into <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> you know the food? Like, yeah, oil is like water. This is adding it to okay. everything. <laughs> No, palm so, oil is actually I'm the water. I'm telling you, palm oil is water, water here. <laughs> it's to be added to everything. It's, like, no, it's not everything to add palm oil to, you know. <laughs> so now you have to be careful. Oh, man. You have to be careful. Yeah, thanks, guys, for listening to this episode. <laughs> Catch you next week. Yep, see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>